course, there has to be more than one player. Uh, at first, the, the big thing is everybody has to know this is what we're up to. Yeah. So we believe the first thing that everybody needs to know is, listen, we are attacking a zero billion dollar market that doesn't exist because we're going to create our own. Because history tells us the company that gets the magic triangle right gets 76% of the economics. So everybody needs to understand that. It's interesting, and maybe it's because I'm turning into the grumpy old man I've been training to be forever. <laughs> <laughs> we meet a lot of young entrepreneurs today who say shit like, oh, this is going to be a huge space and there's going to be room for everybody. We, you know, we just, we just want our... Like, really? And you know what my response to that is? Call me when you do your next startup. <laughs> so, we need to understand we live in a world where one company gets most of the economics in space after space after space. Certainly in technology business, starting to happen in more industries as well. Uh, so that's kind of, everybody needs to understand that. And then everybody needs to understand, we, we think all three parts of the triangle are equally important. You can't fuck one up and get it right. Or let me say, well, let me say that more uh, rigorously. By getting all three right, you materially increase the odds. Twitter, to this day, has no fuck clue what category it is. They, don't, they can't answer what problem they solve. But, you know, they're, from a market cap perspective, pretty successful. Um, if you look at Lululemon, it's a great example. Lululemon got product and category absolutely right. It's a piece of shit company. Investors hate it. It's run by a bunch of morons, right? And yet, every woman in the world is running around in these things, and hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. It's like, oh, we talked women into wearing those, and when they go to the beach, we talked them into wearing their underwear. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Uh, but terrible company. And so all three are equally right. And so the most important thing is that Ultimately, the executive team understand that, and really, the whole company understand that, that that's what we're playing. And as a CEO, what you need to be super smart about is, in the book, we talk about the category life cycle, and I can walk you through it if you care. But categories have a life cycle, and in technology, we, in our big data science research, we had a huge insight around how long it takes to build a category king, and we, we know that from a data perspective, and we believe that that's because that's how long it takes to get the category to go. And the answer, by the way, is six to ten years in the tech space. Uh, and I can walk you through why if you give a shit. So with all that said, the CEO has to be incredibly smart about where she's focusing hard on the magic triangle as you're going through the category life cycle. In the beginning, it's product. As the company begin, as the product begins to get some traction, it's the company. And then to scale and become the category king, it becomes the category. And if you look at uh, somebody like a Benioff or an Ellison, uh, or certainly a Jobs while he was still alive, um, you see how much they focus on the category once the product gets launched, and they let the they let the product teams do what they do, and they have more of an oversight role. If you look at the history of Microsoft, it's fascinating. When did Microsoft stop what most people would say innovating? The truth is they didn't stop innovating. They stopped category designing. And Gates left. So we talk about the difference between uh, designing a new category and harvesting an existing one. Bomber is a legendary category harvester yeah. and a shit retarded category designer. And so the other thing that we think is if you know this, being self actualized also matters because we all have natural strengths and weaknesses. And so, to your point on the team, all three matter all the time, and from the CEO's perspective, she needs to shift her focus depending on where you are in the life cycle. Um, and if you're not a CEO who's a natural evangelist, 
you have to get trained in it. There is no option today called, I'm going to sit in the office. That is fuck over. I don't care what anyone says, that is over. You don't have to be uh, as charismatic as a Jobs, um, but you have to be out in the world evangelizing your category. That said, if that was a weakness of yours as a CEO, you would build an executive team who can also carry that water for you. And so building a team that understands the triangle, understands where we are in the category life cycle, and where the focus needs to be, and how the distribution of work happens, is really how you get that done. And if you, if you get that done right, you become corny. It's a 150-year-old company that's been doing this for 150 years. If you get that right, you become Amazon. Books, all e-commerce, uh, digital books, and now AWS. There are analysts out there that say if you spun AWS out of Amazon, uh, it would be worth more than Oracle is today. Okay, on that happy note, yeah. Christopher, <laughs> you didn't ask a question. Uh, whoever wants the book, just come and see me. I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were asking the questions. I know. I was trying to. I was trying to find a question over to you. Um, so the way it's going to work now is we're going to. It's six thirty almost. We're going to take a ten minute break. Please refresh your drinks. Uh, do whatever you need to do in this short break, and then we're going to reconvene. Um, and listen to our musician, and um, also if somebody wants an eye patch, yeah, I think to have ten of them up here. <laughs> uh, and actually, maybe the person who puts the eye patch on first, but I don't want to scrum, so I don't know. Just ask me for the book, and then and then we'll come back and we'll hear our musician play. And Christopher, I don't know when you're leaving, but he'll be around for a while. So if you have questions that you were shy to ask in front of the group. I'm sure he'd be happy to take them. And thank you very much, Christopher. That was the most terrible.